Conscious capitalism consists of four basic principles. Uh, the for first principle is that business has the potential to have a higher purpose that goes beyond merely maximizing profits and shareholder value. Why is it that we think business's purpose is to maximize profits? Uh, it isn't, if not primarily. And so the first principle of conscious capital is recognizing that business can have a, a, a social purpose or a deeper purpose than only shareholder maximization. Secondly, it's what we call the stakeholder principle. The idea that there are uh, other stakeholders besides the investors that matter. The customers, the employees, the suppliers, the community, and the environment. That these are all interdependent on one another. They're all connected together. And that business's job is to create value for all of those interdependent stakeholders. Capitalism is about creating shared value for all of these stakeholders who are trading with the business voluntarily. Third principle is, is a different philosophy of leadership. That leadership is conscious leadership or a type of servant leadership that, that puts the, the values and the mission of the business first ahead of their own personal interest. Uh, so that it's not about lining their own pockets or, or making as much money as possible. They're trying to fulfill the purpose of the business recognize the stakeholder philosophy and help the business to reach its fullest and highest potential. So you need leadership. A business can't reach its highest potential if the leadership isn't committed to that purpose and to that vision of stakeholder interdependency. And fourth, you have to create a culture in the organization that supports the purpose, that supports the stakeholder principle and nurtures the leadership. If you don't have the culture the conscious culture, it's very unlikely you'll be able to sustain a conscious business. So those four principles, purpose, stakeholders, conscious leadership, conscious culture, that's my definition of conscious capitalism. There's kind of a myth out there that there are all these trade-offs that are involved. A conscious capitalism sounds good, but uh, if you practice it, you're basically, you're going to shortchange the shareholders. And that is a myth because the exact opposite is the case, that this is the best strategy to also create long-term shareholder value and to maximize your profits. Because instead of thinking in terms of trade-offs, you have to think in terms of synergies, that by having a higher purpose, you get a greater commitment from your employees, you have greater loyalty with your customers, your suppliers like doing business with you, and as a result, the business flourishes, and that results in higher sales and higher profits. It's a win, 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 win philosophy of business. The proof's in the pudding. I mean, look at the companies that, that I've defined as conscious businesses, like Whole Foods, the Container Store, Southwest Airlines, Google, one of my competitors, Trader Joe's. Costco is another good example. I think in, there are elements in Apple Computer, Berkshire Hathaway, Microsoft. Uh, these are companies that uh, uh, hear the beat of a different drummer. And they're not perfect companies. And not, Whole Foods isn't a perfect company. And every business has its challenges. But they still have this sense of purpose in their work. They still try to create value for their, their shareholders. They try to create a culture that uh, is supportive of their philosophies. And as a result, those businesses flourish and create higher synergies that result in greater profits for the shareholders. It's a win-win-win-win it's a philosophy.